The Amazon basin is seven million square kilometers in area. And within it, five and a half million square kilometers remains almost entirely unstudied by archaeologists. We've done world archaeology, but we've just ignored the Amazon. What we find in the Amazon are thousands of henges that are now beginning to emerge from the cleared area of the jungle and others that have been identified for the first time with LIDAR. Discoveries of ancient civilizations in the Amazon jungle have unveiled a complex and sophisticated history that challenges previous assumptions about the region. These discoveries, made through a combination of aerial surveys, satellite imagery and ground expeditions, reveal the existence of large, well-planned urban settlements, extensive road networks and advanced agricultural techniques, suggesting a much higher level of social organization and environmental management than previously thought. The Kuhikugu complex in the upper Xingu region of the Brazilian Amazon offers an incredible glimpse into the advanced urban planning and societal organization of pre-Columbian civilizations long before European contact. Nestled in the remote Amazon basin in present-day Mato Grosso, Brazil, this area is a treasure trove of biodiversity. The dense rainforests and network of rivers likely played a key role in the development and sustenance of this complex society. Covering about 50 square kilometers, the Kuhikugu complex is home to over 20 settlements. These aren't just randomly placed, they're strategically positioned to make the most of the region's natural resources. What's fascinating is how these settlements are connected. Imagine a series of straight roads, some stretching for several kilometers, laid out with such precision that they often align with the cardinal directions. This not only facilitated travel, but also shows a high level of planning and coordination. Then there's the canal system, an impressive display of hydraulic engineering, likely used for everything from transportation to water management and maybe even fish farming. The variety of structures within the complex is equally remarkable. From large public buildings and ceremonial spaces to individual homes, the architecture reflects a hierarchy in building techniques, hinting at different social or functional roles within the society. And speaking of society, Estimates suggest that at its peak, Kuhikugu could have supported a whopping 30,000 to 50,000 people. This is deduced from the sheer number of residential structures and the expanse of agricultural land. Uh, along the Amazon, he reported seeing incredible cities, advanced arts and crafts, millions of people, a thriving culture. Uh, the rediscovery of the Kuhikugu complex in the Amazon is a fascinating story that blends modern technology with traditional archaeology. Initially, this hidden gem was revealed through aerial surveys and satellite images. Imagine flying over the dense Amazon rainforest and suddenly spotting the outlines of an ancient civilization. Then, archaeologists like Michael Heckenberger and his team took over, conducting extensive ground excavations. They employed advanced techniques like LIDAR, which is like X-ray vision for archaeologists, to see through the forest canopy and map the area accurately. Now let's talk about how old this place is. Using carbon dating, a method to tell the age of artifacts and soil, scientists figured out that people lived in the Kuhikugu complex for several centuries, dating back to as early as 800 AD. They found all sorts of things like pottery, stone tools and ornaments, giving us a glimpse into the daily life and creativity of the people who lived there. Here's the kicker. Before finding Kuhikugu, many thought the Amazon was mostly an untouched wilderness before Europeans arrived. But this discovery turned that idea on its head, showing that the area was home to a large and complex society. It's like finding a hidden chapter of history in your backyard. This place shows us that humans had a big impact on the Amazon way earlier than we thought. They even made their own super fertile soil called Terra Preta, which is still rich and productive today. What's really cool about Kuhikugu is how it shows that the people there knew how to live sustainably. They had advanced farming practices, managed water well, and lived in harmony with their environment. It's like they were eco-friendly before it was trendy. This discovery also made us rethink the role of indigenous societies in the Amazon. It turns out they knew a lot about how to manage the land and shape the landscape. It's a reminder of how important it is to value and learn from indigenous knowledge. And lastly, the biodiversity in the Amazon today might partly be thanks to these ancient civilizations. The variety of plants near these archaeological sites is way more than in other areas of the forest. 
The Amazon is basically a garden. The Amazon is a man-made rainforest. Uh, there are certain trees like Brazil nut trees or the ice cream bean tree, which are food crops, which are very, very valuable. Marajo Island at the Amazon River's mouth is like a time capsule that takes us back to the Marajoara culture, a sophisticated civilization from around 800 to 1400 CE. Imagine an island almost as big as Switzerland, right at the meeting point of a river and the ocean. This place, with its mix of forests, savannas and wetlands, is not just big but also incredibly diverse. It's the perfect backdrop for the Marahuara people to thrive, providing everything from food to resources for their unique lifestyle. Now, the Marahuara culture is something special. They were known for their artistic flair, especially their ceramics. Picture pots and plates with intricate designs, complex patterns and images of animals and people. They weren't just making these for fun. Their ceramics were a big part of their culture and beliefs, like the large, beautifully decorated urns they used for burials. These suggest they had quite complex ideas about life, death, and everything in between. But it's not just their art that's fascinating. They built these massive earthen mounds, some over 10 meters high. Think about that. That's like stacking three buses on top of each other. These mounds were probably used for everything from homes to ceremonial sites and might have even protected them from the frequent floods. This shows they were pretty savvy engineers and architects, adapting to their challenging environment in style. The way they organized their society was also quite something. It seems there was a clear hierarchy, with some people leading the way in managing resources and religious practices. And they had different roles for men and women which we can figure out from the things they left behind. Now let's talk about their farming skills. They were ahead of their time, creating raised fields to keep their crops safe from flooding. Their diet was a mix of what they grew, along with fish and game from the surrounding area. And they were smart about managing water with their canals and ditches, which was pretty crucial in a place that floods a lot. Santa Rem, right where the Tapajos meets the Amazon River, is a fascinating place, especially when you think about its history. This spot was like the Grand Central Station of its time, bustling with trade and culture. Picture boats coming in and out, carrying all sorts of goods and ideas from different parts of South America. The area around Santa Rem was rich in resources, which helped the settlement thrive. Now, the people of Santa Rem were known for their incredible pottery. We're talking about really intricate designs here, geometric patterns, pictures of people and animals, and even mythical beings. The level of detail in these pots and plates is just mind-blowing. And it wasn't just about looking good. These designs tell us a lot about their culture and beliefs. The way they made this pottery was pretty advanced too. They had techniques for molding, firing and painting that were way ahead of their time. The variety of colors and the way they used glazes show they really knew their stuff when it came to chemistry and kiln construction. It's like they were the master chefs of pottery, knowing exactly how to cook up the perfect piece. Santa Rem was more than just a local market. It was a cultural hub. The different styles and motifs in the pottery suggest they were mixing it up with all sorts of cultures. And it wasn't just goods they were trading. They were probably swapping stories, ideas and practices too. The town itself, from what we can tell from the ruins, was pretty well organized. They had different areas for living, working and probably for community gatherings or ceremonies. It's like they had their own little urban planning going on. But back to the pottery, it's not just about how it was made, but what it tells us about the people of Santa Rem. It gives us a peek into their daily lives, what they valued, and how they connected with others. The geoglyphs in the Amazon, especially in the Brazilian states of Acre and Rondonia, are like a secret world that's been hidden under the dense forest canopy for centuries. It wasn't until the late 20th and early 21st centuries, mostly because of deforestation, that these incredible earthworks started to come to light, thanks to technology like satellite imagery and LIDAR, which is basically like having X-ray vision from space, over 450 of these geoglyphs have been mapped. This discovery has completely changed our view of how people lived in the Amazon before Columbus. Now these aren't just a few lines in the dirt. We're talking about huge designs that can stretch over a kilometer and cover several square kilometers, they come in all sorts of shapes, circles, squares, rectangles, and more intricate forms. Some even have patterns like radial spokes which add to their complexity. The sheer size of these geoglyphs hints at a society that was really well organized and could bring together a lot of people to create these massive works. But how did they make them? 
Well, they would remove the top layer of soil and vegetation, revealing the lighter colored earth underneath. This contrast made the design stand out when viewed from above. It seems like they used a variety of tools made from materials like stone, bone and wood. The level of precision in these geoglyphs shows they were not only skilled but also had serious planning chops. Some of these geoglyphs line up with astronomical events, like the solstices and equinoxes. This suggests they might have been used for tracking celestial events or for ceremonial or religious purposes. Imagine large groups of people gathering at these geoglyphs for festivals or rituals. It must have been quite a sight. But here's the really cool part. These geoglyphs tell us that the societies in the Amazon before Europeans arrived were much more complex than we thought. They could modify their environment on a large scale and had a social structure where leaders could organize big projects. And despite the size of these geoglyphs, they were made in a way that respected and integrated with the surrounding landscape. So discovering these geoglyphs has really turned our understanding of the Amazon's history on its head. It's no longer seen as just a vast, untouched wilderness, but as a place where complex, organized societies lived and actively shaped their world. It's a reminder of how much history there is still to uncover and how much we can learn from it.